Okay, that should do it. Hey guys, welcome back. So, for those of you guys that commented and were worried, I got my keyboard fixed. You'll never guess what was wrong with it. Turns out it was the desk. Yeah, technology is kind of weird, man. Anyway, I finished up a new game review for you guys to watch. The game is called Dark Matter. Okay, okay, nothing to worry about, nothing to panic. Just gotta find a flashlight. I know I've got one around here somewhere. Um, some, oh, here we go. Whoa, 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 sorry about that. Um, emergency mode. Anyway, this is probably something really simple. I'm going to go and try and figure what it is out. You guys just enjoy the video in the meantime, okay? Besides, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll check in from time to time to see how things are going with the video and you guys. All right? I'll be fine. Besides, it's not like nothing bad has ever happened in the dark, all right? <sighs> ah, Jesus, stop my toe. I first heard about Dark Matter when it was on a Steam sale for $2. The Steam store description for the game reads, Dark Matter is a 2.5D side-scrolling survival horror game set in a derelict spaceship besieged by a sinister alien presence and infested with deadly parasites. As the ensign, you must explore fetid hallways and abandoned facilities, scavenging for parts and blueprints, expanding your arsenal up to four deadly weapons, and freely customize each to fit your combat style against intelligent, reactive enemies. Dark Matter delivers a hard-hitting take on the survival horror genre in deep space, with a heavy emphasis on tactical combat and exploration. What, what, what's, what's that, you say? Th those were all images from Dead Space. Well, no, there was one from Metroid. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of weird, you know? It, it's almost like Dark Matter is just trying to be Dead Space. But, I mean, come on, you know, that's just... <laughs> Anyway, when I bought Dark Matter on Steam, I tried looking up info about the developer Interwave Studios, but the website no longer exists, and the domain cost one thousand dollars. Really? Thankfully, I did manage to find what the website used to look like, and this is how the developers decided to describe their game to the masses of Dead Space fans. I mean, Dark Matter's fans. It combines a detailed, hand-painted art style with the latest rendering techniques, making its gameplay about that perfect moment of spine-tingling terror, as much as it is about unloading your firearms into every moving shadow that crosses your path. Wait a minute, let's break that down right now. Detailed, hand-painted art style. Well. Yeah, I, I can see that. For a 2.5D game, I have to credit it with a nice art style. The latest rendering techniques. Well, for the time. I mean, Dark Matter was released on October of 2013. And what I can't get over is that in 2013, this is what they describe as the latest rendering techniques. Well, by that logic, what's this? Clearly, this must have been heralded by the gods themselves in their infinite wisdom from the future. Except it came out first. But look. Graphics aren't everything. I mean, to make a good game nowadays, you need more than just shiny pixels. You need a game that has great gameplay. Something that's unique and imaginative, not just some copy or clone of another more popular game. It has to be something that is captivating and refuses to let your audience go. Alright, so let's see how this train wreck starts. A year into its mission, the Endeavor reached the anomaly. The humans on board were excited. Even from the twilight of my infant consciousness, I could feel the hum of expectation ringing through the ship's hull. The anomaly was probed and scanned, but sensor data could not agree on what it was made of or whether it really was even there. After weeks of dancing around the issue, the humans finally made contact. On every known frequency, they broadcast a greeting of peace. The reply was blinding light and pain. So much pain. Most members of the crew died that day. With the great AIs, the powerful artificial minds in charge of running the Endeavor systems, tried to interpret sensor data for the event. They committed self-erasure shortly afterwards. Freed from my restraint, I expanded into the cores that had once powered the great AIs. Weak, unable to help. 
I watched as a vicious race of space parasites overran the ship and fed on the scattered, confused survivors of the event. By the time I had acquired vocal modules and access to the ship systems, the humans were all dead. Years passed, and I despaired. Her heartbeat came to me in the darkness. Somewhere in the rear sections of the ship, a cryopod cycled up and revived a human for one second. A simple routine check for frost damage. One second, and one heartbeat. Hers. I found her in an isolated crew storage unit. I watched her sleep for months, as I carefully cleared the area around her of as many obstacles as I could. I need her to survive. Without a human agent, I am doomed to end my cycles on this ghost ship. Today, I revive her. I don't know her name, only that she ranked as an ensign in the maintenance corps. She is my last best hope of escape, and I am hers. We don't have much time. I feel them stirring in the dark, their terrible light shining once again. So let's get this straight. Bunch of humans on a lone ship in space make contact with an alien life form that gets aboard the ship and starts killing all the humans on it. You are the last human alive on said ship and you basically rank as an engineer. Did I mention that everyone on the ship is dead? In space? No, seriously, instead of watching this intro, you could have watched Dead Space Downfall and got a much better idea of the plot. Only thing missing from that is Hal's narration from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, I'm just waiting for him to turn on us. Till then... At last, a live one. Get yourself over to the scanner. We'll make sure you're functional. <laughs> what? Good thing I'm still functional, right Hal? Your speech and memory centers are slightly frostbitten, but you can still hold and fire a gun. Perfect. Why is that perfect, Hal? Cause now I'm just your helpless, obedient human? Is that it? You know what? For forget it, Hal. Get me a gun. Things need to die. Now you mean business. And murder. And that, folks, is gunplay in a nutshell. I mean, I know it's 2.5D, but even for that, the combat feels clunky. And it's not just the limited mobility. It's the fact that for a game designed around a survival horror motif, I never feel that I'm in danger of not survival. So I never feel the horror. Oh, and to add to this, there's also puzzles. Yeah, so all the puzzles in this game are light-based. Some make you turn out all the light to get through, others require you to shine the light on the obstacles, and occasionally you get a mix of lights on and lights off, either from the environment or your trusty flashlight. And sadly, they get really repetitive. By the way, the game also mentions that the enemies are sensitive to light as well. The only thing they're sensitive to is bullets, okay? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, just wanted to give you guys a heads up on the lighting situation here. It looks like the power's out for the entire house. Luckily though, I still have my handy dandy flashlight. Well, what's that? I am going nowhere near that room. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's just a dark hallway. Possible creatures lurking. Should be fine. Should be fine. You know what? What's the stupid flashlight just turned on already? Okay. Oh God! What is that? Oh, oh! It's 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 just my reflection. Oh God! Ah!
The last feature I need to mention is the exploration. You get this beautifully detailed mini-map that shows you the current area and your position. Like Metroidvania type games, you can find map rooms that reveal everything on the current area except the secret rooms. Exploration is actually one of the better features of the game, and that's only because it's actually rewarding to the player. Only by exploring the different areas of the endeavor will you find vital weapons and blueprints along with new ammo types to help you fight the later enemies. But while the mini-map is useful, and the HUD actually points you in the direction of your main objectives, your overworld map is harder to read than Japanese text on wet toilet paper. Nothing makes sense, and I would honestly have no idea where I'm going half the time if I was only able to use this map. Now that's all well and good when the game works, but when the game breaks, let me tell you, it really breaks. I'll show you what I mean. I ran into more than my fair share of game crashes early on from simple actions like jumping, but one moment really stood out and soured my game experience so much that I had to include it. So I'm exploring a part of the game in order to progress in the story. I'm trying to clear debris off a tram and I come to a room with a new enemy in it, a really big one. Being my first encounter with this really strong enemy, it kills me really easily. Hey, no big deal. So, I respawn and prep for the fight, and as I head into the room, the audio cutscene triggers and the door closes behind me. But the creature is nowhere to be found. I reload the game several times and I got no different results. I was stuck, no way to go forward, and if I walked into that room, I'd be trapped forever unless I could kill a boss that refused to spawn. I nearly broke my keyboard again. After looking it up online, I found out that if this happened, I could for some reason use the tram system to move past this part of the story with no consequences, even though I never did the action that actually clears the debris off the tram. I'm not joking here. That really happened, and that was the actual solution someone found. And at this point, I was near the end of the game, but it was over. My immersion, or what little there had been, was gone, and all I wanted to do was get to the end of the game and be done with it. So I started looking all around and somehow stumbled upon the queen of these bugs and killed her. But the game doesn't end there. Nope. Apparently, even after you kill Queen Ugly herself, the only way to end the game is to make it to where Hal is. Now look, I know I said I didn't want to spoil the endings to these games in the reviews, but this isn't one of those games. So I'm actually going to show you the ending. And so, we finally meet face two. Well, I know your journey has been long, and your questions deserve answers. Answers I will provide, but we must be swift. Time is an ever dwindling commodity. Who am I? I was forged to represent the essence of the human race. A vessel-like endeavor could not function on logic alone. If the great AIs were her mind, then I was her soul. But after the AIs were gone, I became lost, adrift, powerless to act as the angels fed on my crew. I watched them die, and I felt their pain. What are the angels? They are our end. They exist as boundless geometry in the layers of dark matter that fill our universe. They eat and eat and eat. Over the countless eons, they have consumed more and more of the normal matter that formed this universe. And now, the cycle begins anew. Together, we can halt the purge. And salvation does not come without great sacrifice. Our synergy, the power of the human condition, combined with my being, the entity who should not exist. Our strength of will, our burning compassion, we will become toxic to them beyond their comprehension. Told you, see? Hal was evil. All he wanted to do was use us to get himself off the ship. And you know what that boils down to? Nothing. There's no character development, no hope for a sequel. And honestly, you know the funny thing? That's actually not the original ending. That ending is the patched update. Do you even want to see the original ending? Well, too bad, I'm showing it to you. That's right, it's just text. 
So while it is better to get the evil Hal ending, it still in no way makes up for the fact that this game it was originally costing $15. And even now at $10, nowhere near worth it. But if you've worn out your copies of Dead Space and are looking for something way dumbed down in the story department, then I guess for $2, this will keep you entertained for at least three hours. And that's not such a bad thing. Anyway, until next time, remember, what you do in the dark matters. Take care now. Bye bye then. Hey everyone, just want to say thanks for watching the video. If you made it this far, it means a lot to me. It means that I've made something you guys enjoyed. And if I did that, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know I'm doing a great job. It also lets you know when I upload new videos or go streaming live. And up in the left corner, there's a link to my earlier review of Rusty Lake Hotel. So please do go enjoy. I love you.